Okay, fingers crossed. Hey guys, this is our first real 599 update. We've actually made some progress with the car now and I'm super excited about it. We made this super cool RGB LED for the steering wheel. It replaces the five boring red LEDs with nine rectangular ones that you can set to any color and they pulse and they do all kinds of cool nerdy stuff. And much more importantly, we made a Motec plug and play dual ECU solution. This car is now running on two Motecs and we have these two connectors open for hybrid activities in the future. So these two connectors here will run the ECU and run the engine, but these two connectors will be for battery control and hybrid control. And it's been a huge amount of work getting the two ECUs to talk to each other, doing all of the integration with the OEM systems in the car. But the car now starts and runs and has no error codes and we can't put it into gear, but other than getting the transmission happy, this thing is working. So let's, let's show you what we did. All right, so one of the first things that I noticed when we got this car were these five boring red shift lights. And I thought it would be really cool if we could turn that into like an RGB can shift light module like, like what a Motec has. And it ended up becoming a really big project, but I bought an OEM shift light and we 3D scanned it, designed a PCB. At, it ended up snowballing to this huge amount of work, but I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. You can see right now the RGB light is doing this bread breathing effect when the key's on. Um, so the way that this thing works is there's a controller that's inside the steering wheel under the airbag here, and that takes in CAN messages and it drives the LED module through the wiring and it uses all the factory wiring. It's totally plug and play. Um, the whole thing with this car is we're trying not to cut it up. So we're trying to do everything as much plug and play and upgrades instead of a, a full kind of teardown build as possible. Uh, and I'm pretty proud of how this shift light module came out. It um, just kept snowballing, like I said. So after getting it to work, just on the factory RPM, we also have turn signals. So if I turn the hazard lights on, it does this cool blinking effect. Um, but I wanted to do more than that as well. So there's a mode now where it can take in messages from the ECU and you can do custom patterns and lights. And the next step to that was how do you adjust it if you don't have to pull the airbag off every time. So on the main board, I ended up putting Wi-Fi um, so that you can use an app and you can go in and you can select what RPM you want each shift light to come on at, what color you want each pattern to be. So we'll show you how that works now, but it's, it's super, super cool. And what started out as kind of a simple project of just trying to pretty this up a bit has now become this, this pretty big thing of software and hardware and integration, which was, uh, yeah, it, it, like I said, it, it just became a bit ridiculous, but I think it's really cool the way it all turned out. So let me show you how this app works. All right, so I'm pretty proud of this thing. It's kind of my first foray into this type of embedded software on a, on a hotspot. But the module in the steering wheel creates a hotspot. You can connect to it, and then you can, in real time, make changes. So you can turn off these breathing effect. You can press save. Now you can see the lights went out. Turn it back on. You can set the shift points for each individual gear, which is super nerdy and fun, but you just drag it and pick the RPM you want each light to come on at. And then you can copy from other gears as well. So you don't have to go through each individual one. And then you can pick what you want the colors to do for each mode. So you can click here and you can say whether you want it to be solid, flash slow or fast. fast. It gives you a little preview of that. And you can pick what color you want. You can even have different custom colors. It's really ridiculous the amount of time that went into this. I still don't really know why I did it. Um, the cool thing is we realized after the fact that this 
shift light, it work is the same part number as other Ferraris, like the 458 and um, a couple others I can't remember now. So there's a good chance that this could end up being a product one day. Um, and that will make a lot of this work worthwhile. But it's super cool. And when the engine's running, the lights update really quickly. And you get a really, really fast visual indicator of exactly how many lights are on. Just like in a race car with, with all the different um, modes and colors and, and functions. So with our Motec, we'll also be able to use it for slip lights. So if the wheel, wheels are spinning, we'll see slip lights. Or if we've got an, an error on the from the ECU, we can have a certain pattern show up. Um, these are all things that are done in motorsport and racing that when I saw this shift light, I said, wouldn't it be cool if we could apply that to this integrated shift light in the steering wheel? And, um, it was a cool side quest and now it's, uh, it's working and it works with our Motec. So that's like a quick little intro to that module. And now let's talk about the real heart of what we were working on, which is that, uh, that Motec ECU solution. So I brought Jesse here because he has been involved in this whole process. We've had the car only for three months um, and it's been rapidly just try and figure out this wiring, build an adapter board, get the CCU in the car. Winter is coming. We want to get this thing running and driving on the road before we're stuck here. Um, so like really it's like the first question people will ask us is, although oh, OEM Bosch ECU is great, why do you need to get rid of it? Why do you need to put Motec in? Well, first of all, Mo Bosch owns Motec now. So if you like Bosch, you have to like Motec <laughs> just by default because <laughs> they're now the same. And secondly, the reason is because we can't control the hybrid system nicely if we don't have control of the engine. Yeah. So, um, and why two ECUs? Well, yeah. you know, the factory wiring is all there. It makes sense to just keep everything in the same place because one ECU, yeah, it could run 12 cylinders. Obviously, sure. Motex run 12 cylinders all the time, but that would take up all the inputs and outputs of the ECU and um, you wouldn't have anything left for the hybrid system. So this actually kind of works itself out. Yeah, yeah. Kels has a maxed out ECU running everything. With six cylinders. <clears throat> yeah, with six cylinders, yeah. So yeah, that's one of the many challenges, you know, made an adapter board to save space here instead of your typical you know, harness full of wires and we don't even have room under the floorboards. No, we, we needed this for the space, but the challenge is if you make a mistake, you need to make a new PCB. You yeah. can't just change a wire. <laughs> Using wiring diagrams that you'll go to a different page and the wires are not the same colors and it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to make that permanent in my new board <laughs> and hope that... But we did test. I mean, you were down there. Yeah, we did yeah. go through and we, we checked whichever cylinders we could easily reach. We checked... Uh, I don't know, we checked a bunch of, we yeah, checked most we of the signals on the- on Almost the totally point. nailed it, except for the drive-by wires, which we knew we didn't have. Right, so completely. we put jumpers to be able to switch. So yeah, and it was a 50-50 shot and we were definitely wrong. So flip the jumpers, no yep. problem. Uh, if we make newer versions, we can make that permanent. Yeah, and I also forgot to wire in the ignition switch signal to an input. So oh, yeah. the ECU keeps itself alive, but then it doesn't know when to turn itself off. Yeah. So that, that's a little, a little mistake, but otherwise it was really good. The challenge then is the CAN bus side. Um, and so with Motec, what you can do is you can, Motec is unique in that they have this, is software environment called M1 Build, where you can write your own software and control systems to not just run an engine, but to run subsystems for an engine. Like for example, you're running a supercharger in your car and you're gonna, we're gonna make a custom control strategy to use a blow off valve to use a supercharger that would otherwise be way too big for your engine. Yeah, and if you're trying to do that with like other standalones or older style ones like we've used on our engine swaps, you end up having to like trick it and say, okay, this this output, which would normally use for uh, the cam control, we're gonna use it to control a motor, you know, for slide throttles or something like that. You have to get really resourceful with that stuff. Whereas with Motec, he just makes the thing, you've got tables and off you go. Yeah, it's designed for that function. Every, the, everything's there, the yeah. tables, the parameters, the channels, it's all. You can control your house with this thing. Um, I had to stop him from doing that because you can't keep buying Motex for no, everything. No, we can't put Motex in literally everything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So that's the really cool thing about M1 Build, why it's so powerful. And it also makes integrating with these OEM vehicles that are complicated, we're able to easily do all those functions. The challenge then, which is always a challenge with newer cars, is the CAN bus integration. Um, and it's fairly nerdy and technical, but basically you have a network 
the factory ECU is communicating over two wires, all kinds of proprietary signals, and you don't know what they are. They're just a bunch of numbers that you can record with a, called a, a can sniffing tool. And so my job is to try to decipher what those messages are. Some are easy, like a throttle pedal. You can see when you move the pedal, it's moving, find that. Some things are much harder. Um, that takes a lot of time. So where we're at now is the engine runs. There's no check engine lights. We got the immobilizer happy. That was a really big mm, challenge. Yeah. So that was, so there's all these different challenges with, with CAN, um, but now we're at the point where we have this V12 paperweight. Yeah, you're like, all right, first gear. <laughs> no gears. No. <laughs> so, no no one's ever made the factory F1 transmission work with a standalone that we know. So if we yeah. can get this thing driving with that, it will not only be really cool, we're going to a six-speed conversion, so we don't need it, but it would be really cool, and it would also allow us to dyno the car um, before we, finish, we do the six-speed conversion. Yeah, I really want to see if we can make more power. Yeah, the uh, factory dyno graph, you remember from the last video, it was terrible. It was super choppy. Um, yeah, so I, I think, or well, I don't think, I'm sure the Motec will do a better job running the car than the Tune. I'm sure the Bosch ECU could have done the same job, but the yeah. Tune that was in the car, in our car, maybe it has a sensor problem or something. You know, I don't want to say Ferrari did a bad job, but the tune on that car that we died on was terrible. So uh, <laughs> Ferrari I'm, lawyers on the phone. I'm right sure now. we're going to find improvements um, <laughs> from just the engine tune, and then also we have all now the possibility to build out the hybrid system and all these other cool things that I'm really excited to, to show you guys. So let us show you now. Trying to bring this into life. All right. mm. Is this thing about to run on 12 cylinders, all powered by Motec? We're gonna try. Uh, two so ECUs. We got this one here, that one there. We've had it running on the right side. These are basically two inline six engines right. shared by a crank. So we call the right one our 2JZ, <laughs> and our left one's an R our, our RB30. Hell yeah. So we've got the right 2JZ working, and we're gonna try. Timing is good. Everything seems Second ready. Timing on the right side, that's running fine. We checked on the left. Yep. Moment of truth. I don't think that's well. It sounds the same. Sounds the same? Yeah. Okay, I'll let you know. We'll try again. Okay. Okay, fingers crossed. Yo. That sounds like 12. That's 12. That's 12. Yeah, it's not running right, but. Hell yeah. It's definitely 12. All right. It's, uh,. It's been quiet down here for a while. Do you want to give us an update just in case we use this for the video? Yeah, I, I have the transmission error light off, but it still can't get shift, so it's still just a big heavy paperweight. Right so now. it runs, but you can't put it in gear? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll come back in, uh, in a bit. Now we have Adam with us. Um, yes, so it's not, like we said before, it's not driving. But, Almost. Uh, it's still really good. Like we've still got a Ferrari V12 running on Motec ECUs. Um, if we can't figure out the gearbox, it's not the end of the world. We're going to put the six speed in anyway, um, but I'm going to keep working at it to hopefully be able to drive it and put on the dyno. Um, to be able to get on tuning this engine before we put the six-speed in. Which yeah, is a while away. Would have been nice to have it all wrapped up in one video, but we've been going for a while, and we figure it's probably best to 
to wrap this part up and explain, you know, how we got everything running and on all the technical fun stuff. Um, by the time we get to the next video, which will be MoTeC powered V12 on the dyno, hopefully, uh, we'll have the transmission running and we'll, we'll touch base again to figure out how we got that sorted. I assume that's, we're close, I think. Are we? What do I need to do? <laughs> that's a you question. That's not for me now. <laughs> Maybe we can call Bosch or Ferrari and they can tell us. Yeah, hopefully. But soon. Hopefully you guys find it interesting. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, I love this nerdy stuff. I've been intensely working, but every time I get, you know, get something working, whether it's as simple as just, you know, you first time you plug the ECU in and you move the gas pedal and you see that it's reading. Like every little win, it's, you know, you get this hit of, uh, I don't know, dopamine or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I would really like to be able to drive it now. So hopefully we'll get that going and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, if I make him sit in front of the camera any longer, he's going to kill me. So uh, yeah, this is dragging out. Have fun, man. Get back to <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs>